What's going on, world? Um, this is going to be the first video blog for LatoyaRene.com. I'm a talent manager. My name is Ernesto Fernandez. Um, basically, what I'm going to explain to you is my first meeting with Latoya and how all this transpired and how we got from where we're at then to where we're at now. Um, uh, I met Latoya. Actually, I met Latoya on Facebook, and um, she inboxed me and the details of the, uh, the conversation. That's not really important. Well, she found me, and um, you know, I read the message, and I was a, a little reluctant at first, only because at that particular moment in my life, like I really wasn't trying to like get back into the music business, and um, like you know, she contacted me, and you know, like I said, I was reluctant, but. I went, I went with it, and um, we scheduled a meeting for, uh, like, like a week later, at a bookstore. It was like um, Barnes & Noble or Books A Million, one or the other. So, um, I go to the meeting, and I don't do first impressions. I don't, I don't believe in doing first impressions. Um, you have to judge an artist based off the art. You have to judge an artist based off what you hear, and a good manager will tell you that. You need to know what you're listening for. You need to know if it's something that can sell, and if it's something you can get behind and put your name behind it. So when we first met, I was really intrigued because she was really on top of her game. Like, she, you know, she spoke very articulate and she was very professional. And she had a whole plan laid out, which was really refreshing to me because every time I meet somebody, you know, they, they don't really have a plan. They know what they, they just say they want to be an artist, but they don't have a business plan on how they want to get there. And, you know, they want somebody else to do the work for them. And I'm not interested in doing that. I'm interested in partnering up with somebody that I know we'll work together to get to where we need to get to. So, um, I heard her whole plan, it was great, but you have to judge it based off the music. So, maybe like 20 minutes into the conversation, we were talking and she let me hear her music. And before she let me hear her music, she explained to me what she had done in the music business before, which was, again, another like, you know, it was a breath of fresh air because she was already pretty well established on, on the regional market, on what she had done and I would say the two or three years prior to, to us meeting. So I heard the music, and um, the first song we listened to is a song that we're actually pushing on the radio now. It's called Midnight Session. Um, it's getting some radio spins with Vision Radio, the company that we partnered with. And um, she put the earphone, you know, I put the earphones on. I needed to tune out a little bit, and that's why I meet at the bookstore because you know, it's really quiet. So I needed to tune out, and I put the earphones on. And when I'm listening to a song, I need to hear the melody. I need to hear the beat. I need to hear the lyrics. I need to hear if it's good. I need to hear if it's a, a, something that, that can be a hit. And right off the bat, when I heard it, it was, a, it was just a really good song. It was just really, really good. It was put together really well. And it's, it's a very sexual song, so obviously you can tell the title. It's called Midnight Session. It's not something that can get played maybe during the daytime on the radios, but it's something that can get played on the radio in the, in the later hours. And when I heard that, I, it was all running through my mind. And you know, I heard all three verses, and I, I remember telling her to let me hear it again. And I went back and I listened to it again. And um, I knew right off the bat I had something, but... You never want to jump into a relationship, uh, especially when it's a, a manager, artist relationship. You want to take your time. You want the artist to feel comfortable with you, that you're not just somebody that's trying to hustle them and take 20% of their income, that you want them to feel like that this is a person that they can get behind, that they can trust their business with. So I remember telling her, um, let's just build for a little bit. Let's take them maybe, uh, honestly, you got to take your time. So I was like, look, let's just take about you know a month, two months to really get to know each other, to feel like this is something that we can do. I was like, give me your music. Let me see if I can do this something. Now, I was already connected a little bit through the music industry. Um, I'm not going to put his name out there. I'll just call him C. Um, 18 months before, now remember this is July 20, 2011 when I met with Toya. So 18 months before would be May 2010. And um, I was managing another artist at the time. And I had run across this, this individual. He's really well, well connected. Big time music a and worked with Bad Boy. Very well established, very well established man. And um, I call, I sent him some music of my former artist, and I remember calling him on the phone, talking to him, and him telling me it's not going to work. It was only three songs that I sent him. Like you have to send ten to fifteen songs so somebody can get, you know, they can compile on what you are before they put their name behind it because that's his name that's going to go behind that, and he doesn't want to send out anything that he's not going to vouch for. And it was no disrespect. He just told me, look, when you have something better, you call me. And I didn't have an in me at the time to tell the artist. And it was a mistake that I made because a manager should always be up front with their artist. He should always be honest. So fast forward. It's July 2011. I remember texting him 
saying, hey, you know, this is Ernesto, this is E, do you remember me? He remembered saying, yeah, I remember him from, from like a year and a half ago. He was like, you know, what are you calling for? I was like, you know, I want to know if I can do some business with you. <laughs> Real green, like as green as the grass, like I didn't really know how to approach it. And uh, he, uh, he was like, he was like, you know what happened last time? He has a really good memory. He was like, you know what happened last time? I was like, yeah, I remember what happened last time. I don't think this is going to happen this time. I remember telling Latoya, I was like, give me, give me some songs so I can send them. I sent him, ah, oh, man, I sent him 15 beats. And I remember within two hours, within two hours, remember, this maybe a week has gone by since I know Latoya now. So I sent him 15 beats. Two hours later, after he heard the beats, he called me up and was like, you really got something. He's like, I'm really feeling the sound. I, I, I like the instrumentation. It's really, it's, it, most part it's organic. He can tell because he's really smart on music. He's been around music 20 years. He was like, our sounds are really, really different. He's like, you got something. And he's like, look, Epic or Def Jam? Those are the two labels that I'm recommending right now. Things are moving fast at this point. I called the toy up. I was like, yeah, I might have something. I wanted to impress her myself because I wanted to show her that I knew what I was doing. And... Like, like that, like clockwork, you know, she, she jumped on it, we made it happen, but, you know, that just shows you how far the music can go, it, it, it only took two hours, now, obviously, it's, it's harder than that, it's a lot harder than that, but, remember now, I sent him music before, he didn't like it, I sent him music this time, it was a completely different story, so, he was so intrigued by the music, he was so captivated by it, that, I want to say... Now, he set the meeting up for September. Remember, this is July. So I want to say two weeks later, I'm at work. And, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing something. I, and my phone rings, and I see it's him. So I was like, oh, I, you know, I take the call. I say, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? And, you know, my man, he was like, hey, what are you doing right now? I was like, man, I'm not doing anything. Talk to me. What, what's going on? I'm thinking the meeting's getting pushed back again because if you're in the music industry, patience really is a virtue. And it's not something that I, I really possess, but it really is a virtue, like, Things get pushed back. So, I'm thinking the meeting's going to get pushed back. And he was like, um, all right, cool. Give me one second. Beeps in. Bam. He hits me with the, the, the guy that's on the line. The other guy that's on the line. Now, the other guy that's on the line, he calls him Sean. He doesn't call him, but what the world knows him as. He calls him Sean. So, he goes, Sean, the kid's on the line. He calls me a kid. I'm, I'm, I was like, I was like, who am I talking to right now? And then, he, you don't recognize my voice. He starts getting, he's like, eh, eh. he's like, <laughs> I remember him saying, like, I told you 10 years ago I'd still be on time. And I knew when he said that who it was. Like, I knew right off the bat who it was. And my jaw dropped to the floor. It was an 11-minute conversation. And I think he might have talked about his money the most. It was, if you haven't guessed by now, the man I was on the phone with was, was Diddy. And um, it, it, it just, it was mind-boggling. It was an 11-minute conversation. I can't really recall what the conversation was about because so much of the conversation, he was talking about himself and um, about what he did. I, I thought at first that the conversation was just to put me on the phone with him. So, you know, as soon as I got off the phone, I'm Facebooking it out there. I'm, I'm texting I'm texting people. I'm getting a lot of people inboxing. I must have got 30 inboxes and 30 comments of people saying, congratulations, like I actually got a deal or something. like. I, I didn't get it. And But it was just a big thing because I hadn't met celebrities before. I had talked to celebrities before. This was something that was completely different. So, you know, I'm sitting in the room later on at night thinking like, wow, it was pretty incredible. I, I called a toy on the phone. I told her, look, this is what your music did. This is where your music has got us. And I get hit with even bigger news as soon as I hang up the phone with her. I get the phone call again, maybe 9.30 at night, saying, what are you doing Wednesday? Now, this is a Monday. So I get the phone call saying, what are you going to do on a Wednesday? And I was like, I, I'm not doing anything on Wednesday. What's going on? He's I need you to be at the W in Atlanta. We're going to be having dinner with Diddy at Justin's restaurant. 